Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my controller collection series. And today we're going to be talking about PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 4, the TRS-80, and the Sega Genesis. Um, I, my name is Mondane. Um, I'm an addict and, uh, been, uh, been one month since I've bought my last controller. Um, it was, a uh, dual sense for the PlayStation five. And, um, I, uh, I, I, I just needed it, man. I needed it to to be able to have four players to play games on my video game consoles. I want to have the multi multiplayer. I want to have the maximum number of people sitting together playing on a couch. I it's not a problem. I it's not. It's not a problem. And just roll it. So first up we have is the official Bluetooth headset for the PlayStation 3. Uh, it's from Sony. It's designed to work with the PS3 and Bluetooth enabled headphones. Uh, you can see that mine's a little bit scratched up. The Sony logo is actually gone. Uh, it's actually in the base right now. It's a nice charging base. It was able to slip in and out and charge back here. It also has a charge port back here volume controls for up and down uh, you could actually take this off and flip it around for the other ear and you can hold this to power it down again the charge cable back there um, didn't really come with a lot of things to cover the earpiece it just kind of fit in the way it did the funny thing is the reason why i bought this is because i got really discouraged by some of the uh, online games for the playstation 3. Uh, i didn't like uh, what some people were saying in the voice chat. So I bought this so that all the voice would go to this thing. And I basically turned it off, muted it, turned the volume all the way down and threw it on my bed and continued playing my online games. And I didn't have to participate in conversations that I did not want to hear. Uh, it's definitely stylish and is pretty high quality. Um, I actually used it for a Bluetooth headset for a phone for a while as well. And uh, it, it turned out fairly well. It had some good quality. I just stopped using it because I stopped playing games online with the PlayStation 3. Next up, we have, get it. Next up, we have the PlayStation iToy. Uh, this is a, uh, I mean, this is a color webcam. It was specifically designed for use with the PlayStation 2. Uh, it uses uh, like some sort of uh, detection vision where it just detects uh, gestures, processes, images taken by the camera. Um, it, it, it was Sony's answer to the Wii because this was like supposed to be motion controls and various other things. And it kind of worked and it kind of didn't work. It actually has a long cable hooks up with USB. Uh, it's meant to be placed underneath the television and aimed. Um, you know, they, they tried, um, you know, uh, it had a built-in microphone as well. Uh, this was released in 2003 and it has the same style as the PlayStation 2 does. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's not bad. Like other companies have done a lot worse. This was Sony's first attempt at developing a camera for, for one of their home systems. All right, next up we have the DualShock 4. And I've, these are two of mine. This one is fairly stock. I have not done anything to it and it's, you know, pretty easy. 
Uh, this one does have some modifications done to it. I have the interchangeable sticks uh, because sometimes in first person shooters, I like having a longer stick and it has the back buttons as well. A really nice feature. Um, but uh, honestly, the, the DualShock 4 is probably one of the more enjoyable controllers uh, that I've played with on the PS4 and with actually a lot of the Sony systems. Uh, it definitely stands out, um, has a built-in uh, speaker and a nice stereo head jack, which is hard to see on this one, but it's easier to see right here. This one does have a pass-through as well. Uh, you know, the, the controllers are pretty actually, are actually pretty easy to recharge through this micro USB. And honestly, as a tech person, I'm not happy with micro USB. I think that it's too flimsy. It doesn't have enough anchor points to, to stay mechanically stable on a PCB, but that's just my take on it. Uh, you know, it's just smooth and nice feels really good in the hands especially like even with the back buttons here and stuff it feels very well balanced I'm, I'm very happy with the way that the dualshock 4 turned out uh, i currently have three and i'm probably going to be picking up a fourth one just because i really do enjoy having like the ability to have four players playing on a game at any point in time that i want to have it happen All right, time to go for an oldie but a goodie. This is the controller for the Radio Shack TRS-80 Color. Uh, the TRS-80 Color, for those of you who don't know, was released in 1977. It was one of the first personal computers that was produced by Tandy. Uh, <clears throat> actually, it's Tandy Corporation. Uh, it's a standard analog controller with a five input plug um, five pin, sorry, five pin plug. And uh, the odd thing is that the, cell, the stick itself is not self-centering. You can see as I work it around, it doesn't, it doesn't have any springs to pull it back to center. And the other thing is this is a left hand or a right hand controller because you can control it this way and hit the action button or control it this way and still hit the action button or do it single handedly. All right. Next up, we have the Sega Genesis six button arcade stick, model number MK1627. This thing is definitely a high quality controller. It's designed for the Sega Genesis, obviously. Uh, it's got the nice long cable. Uh, it features a traditional arcade style layout with the six buttons at a nice angle. Uh, it definitely provides a familiar and comfortable experience. The build quality is definitely solid. The buttons are responsive and have a good tactile response. Uh, one of the standout features of the MK1627 is the compatibility with a wide variety of games because of this three button or six button selector switch right here. It has a large base that helps the controller stability and the cable is definitely long enough to give players plenty of room to move around. I would definitely recommend the MK1627 for anyone who's looking for a high quality controller that provides a true arcade style experience. And that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month and I look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe and have a wonderful day.